guys welcome back to my channel I'm so excited for today's video I had the idea of this like sometime last week and I was like oh my gosh I need to like film this like yesterday today I am going to be talking to all of you first time or newly established booth runners booth runners are 1099 independent contractors specifically in this video I'm talking about more of the hairstylists of um, independent contractors also talking to all hairstylists booth runners in general though too um, but this video is more so geared towards um, early on newly established booth runners what I'm gonna be going over today is I'm calling it like your booth runner starter kit for again booth runners how many times can I say booth runners in the in the video already so this is kind of what if I could go back and start the whole independent contractor independent stylist process again I would use this guide as my starter pack essentially if you guys don't know if you're new here I'm a hairstylist I've been self-employed for actually I'm going on my four year anniversary November is when I started booth running on my own and actually my four year anniversary at the first salon I booth rented at I just saw the like time hop post of it the other day so what better time to do that than now like I said I've been self-employed for a few years now I definitely have come an astronomically far way um, in the self-employed world when I first started booth running I was actually a little baby stylist. I started booth running a little sooner than I was hoping to. That's something I can get into in another video of my booth running journey. But I had actually only been licensed for maybe a little over under six months at the time. But I just kind of was left with no choice. Um, there wasn't a lot of commission salons in my area. So yeah, I was a baby stylist. I had barely turned 21, so I was still a kid really too. And they really don't teach you in beauty school how serious it is in the sense that when you are booth running you are running and operating a business I learned that I don't want to say the hard way but I just I didn't realize the seriousness of it until I was like a few months in so and and I also know there are some stylists that don't fully realize that even after they've been booth running for years you know um i really wish that was something that was elaborated a lot more in school if you're interested let's get started you may want to take some notes for this video too um just because again i feel like i'm going to do a whole lot of word vomit so i apologize in advance so first off before you figure out this is just talking in a generality standpoint figure out what you plan to do the most in this does not necessarily mean what you're going to specialize in if you haven't picked out your specialty i would suggest just going through sitting down and writing out like what all do I plan on offering at the salon especially if you're gonna be offering multiple different types of services so at first when I started out booth running I actually was hair and I did a little bit of pedicures as well so I had to get pedicure stuff if you're gonna be hair only then you know go and in the hair category obviously there's multiple different types of hair services um, break that all down if it's a full service salon or a multi-service salon and you're going to be offering different types of services again write them all out and elaborate from there so another example would be if you're going to do hair and lash extensions or you know something of that sort so to make this easier again i'm going to kind of go into like where i specialize in because i feel like i i was able to really elaborate on those and then that helps that's going to help me then explain it to anybody i'm a blonding specialist so i'm going to be giving blonding specialist examples um, and then again you can take that and put that into your own the other services that you offer and hopefully that will help you figure that out so with blonding and balayaging you use a lot of lightener right so in my recommendation i recommend if you wherever you specialize in or whatever you are going to do the most service of make sure you have multiple prime tools of that service okay so in blonding and balayaging we're going to be using a lot of lightener i recommend having multiple lighteners at least two because not every lightning service is going to be the same take that and again if you are going to specialize in cutting you may want to invest in multiple different types and sizes of cutting shears. Um, if you're going to specialize in nail services, you may need to have multiple types of, you know, nail builders or, you know, have a have a gel set, have a gel kit and then have like, I know like, like either UV gel or gel artificial, you know, that kind of stuff. 
going back to blonding again every service every lightning service is different i keep three different types of lighteners on deck at all times i have a clay lightener and two powder lighteners the clay lightener is again for your traditional open air balayaging um the two powder lighteners have different uh types of lift the one clay lightener or the i'm sorry the one powder lightener that i use is blue based so it tones while it lifts and it lifts only up to eight levels and it's definitely a lot more of a gentler slower lift my other powder lightener is white based so it does not tone while it lifts but it lifts up to nine levels and it's definitely a faster working lightener okay so i will have some days where i'm using all three of those lighteners within on different people in what you specialize in having multiple different tools for that service is going to be very necessary and essential with my blonding or with my colors people make sure you have a wide array of lightener i don't use 10 or 40 volume as much but i do use the both of them enough that i do need to make sure i keep a decent stock of those at all times okay now my most used lighteners are 20 and 30 so i normally will have like what i call back stock of both 20 and 30 volumes so that the second i run out of it i'm not slo i am can be doing anywhere from 10 to 12 to even like on my busiest weeks 15 lightning services a week so that means 10 to 15 times I could be opening up my 20 volume and as you know like yeah you get a decent size in it but there's a very low chance I'm only using one bowl of lightener per, per client and if they're all starting at 20 volume there's a high chance I'm going to go through that whole tube in the same week. Try to predict what you will use the most of when you are figuring out your lightener and your developer stock. Um, so even in my lightener situation, I also in my with my two powder lighteners, I keep two of the hugest <laughs> tubs that they offer. They're two and a half pound tubs. So they are kind of, you know, they take up quite a bit of space, but I use them all the time. I also keep back stock of them so that I'm not always having to restock every week that I'm going to the supply store. But then for my plate lightener, I'm not using that one as much. So I normally just keep a pound stack of that and that's just what i've learned with how often i'm using them with your developer so for me for example with my developer i will keep normally one sometimes two tubs of the 10 volume just depending on what i'm doing that week i will always 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 keep two sometimes three tubs of the 20 volume i told you he was gonna be walking back and forth and then same thing with the 30, two, sometimes three, just depending on how busy I am right now with the holidays, I'm a little bit busier at work. So I will make sure to keep a good amount. Springtime, I also get really busy as well because everyone's wanting to go lighter for the season. So again, I will make sure I keep upwards to three tubs of that in stock. And then normally 40, I'm normally only having to keep one tube because again, I'm not using it as much. It is nice to have, but I'm not using it as often and I'm not having to restock it as often as the 20 and the 30 volume. Um, but also too with that, it definitely doesn't hurt to have generic backups of developer just in case. So uh, Prolific, I believe at Salon Centric is like the, their generic brand of developer. You could use that. Hi baby. Honey, you can sit with me, but you can't block me. You keep blocking me. <laughs> Even just like Redkins Peroxide that I normally try to keep at least a 20 and sometimes a 30 volume of that. Or again, those just-in-case situations where, you know, if you think you're going to be able to run to the supply store and you can't, or if you run out a lot sooner than what you're expecting, at least so that even if it's like a not my most preferred let developer so you're just again not sol because again you kind of go through developer a little more than you think definitely investing in a quality lightener for my blonding specialist investing in a quality lightener that really helps you to get one stunning results but also helping keeping the hair intact and keeping the integrity there is very important if you are going to specialize in something you want to be able to give outstanding results but also in the hair or the skin or whatever better than where it started you know if you're an esthetician you're going to be specializing in facials let's say you're using a lot of those machines again i don't know those machines so pardon me investing in those machines will help you to give the most quality results as possible obviously it's just something that again you can use that to advertise yourself and saying that you invest in the best of the best products so my recommendation for quality lightener would definitely be oligo blacklight i have a video breaking down the entire blacklight lightener line 
I have used it for literally years. I've pretty much have I've actually pretty much used it since I started my brew thermal journey. Um, I've used other quality lighteners as well, and just in my opinion, nothing beats Oligo Black Light. Yeah, let's get into bond builders. Bond builders are extra. You don't necessarily have to invest in them right away. However, that is just something extra that you can provide for your clients, whether you decide to include it in every service or you decide to add it on. That's up to you. But that is just another thing that sets you apart from the other blonding specialist or the other color specialist that does not include any type of bond builder. Yes, that is an extra added cost. However, if you implement that into your pricing, again, whether you decide to just make it an add-on or you include it in your services and you just have it priced up, you have your starting price a little higher than what you would if you didn't include a bond builder, you can still make your money back from it essentially even make maybe even a little bit of a profit off of it because you are offering an additional service technically and then again you're setting yourself apart by being able to provide outstanding results yet keeping the integrity of the hair intact um, I've used multiple different bond builders in my day uh, and when I'm talking about bond builder I mean like bond builders or you know bond enforcers you know we've got peptide protection as well if you really want to set yourself apart you can have multiple different bond builders and bond enforcers technically I offer three different types of bond protection as a whole again like I said my black light developer has bond enforcing technology in it I also use Olaplex and I also offer K18. If we eventually want to go over like pricing and how to go about pricing your stuff, that's for another video. All right, so now on to treatments and masks. This is again another optional thing. If you have the means for it again. I do think it's nice to include some type of mask or treatment in your bonding services. Obviously, we know when we're lightening the hair, we throw the pH all out of whack because we have to lighten the hair because that's what we have to do in order to remove that pigment. So a lot of times, if you're using like a mask or deep conditioner or whatever or treatment. A lot of times those will kind of help to like bring the pH of the hair back down. Um, I know some stylists don't like to include a treatment or a mask because of the downtime that you have to do with it, but what I do 9.9 .9 times out of 10 is after I'm lightening, but before the toner, I will towel dry the hair really well and then I'll lay a mask down and I will use that as like my filler essentially before I tone. It helps to fill in any cracks of where the hair might be a little bit more porous. Again, it also, depending on whatever you do, it can help to like strengthen, moisturize, you know, hydrate, whatever. Also too, I really, really like using a mask or treatment on people after I'm teasy lighting because that will also give a lot of slip to the hair and help to detangle. I've had a lot of clients say, you don't have to invest in anything crazy. I do, because again, like I said, I do offer K18, so I do have the K18 mask. I have that. I also have the Olaplex 4-in-1 mask. I love that stuff. I love how thick it is, but yet it also doesn't like affect the toning process at all. Neither does the K18 mask, but that one's a lot more thinner of a consistency. And if you see my review on it, the consistency of that mask is definitely a lot more weirder than just your traditional mask. Um, but yeah, I use that. The two that I'm using the most is the Olaplex 4-in-1 and the K18 mask. Um, the other one that I'll use sometimes too is Amika's Soul Food Mask. I use that at home just as my deep treatment mask too, but if I don't feel like the hair needs either or, I will use the Amika mask too, but I really like that the Olaplex one has a pump, and again, I love the consistency. That's the one that I'm using like 80% of the time, and I'd say 15% of the time it's K18, and like 5% would be the Amika one. And again, that's just something else that just sets you apart from other stylists that doesn't take much added effort it's just a little bit of an added um expense to you um i just offer it for after my blonding services after color services if they decide to get a treat if they after just regular color services so no lightener so like if it's just regular regular color if they want a treatment that is added on um with haircuts or with shampoo blowouts that's added on as well it's just the lightning services that i include those in on um okay so now let's get into like your color stocking 
So I'm going to break this down. I'm going to talk as if you are about to go specialize and do a whole lot of blonding and balayaging, okay? So again, I'm going to talk in this as if you are about to specialize in doing blonding because again, since that's what I specialize in, that was a, that was the easiest way for me to break this down. And I'll just kind of help you like re... I'll just kind of help you like figure it out for your specific service as we go. So... If you're gonna specialize in blonding, there's a high chance you might not do a lot of permanent color. Permanent color, most of the time, is for mainly like grays, natural gray haired clients. I do have a handful of clients that do have natural grays, but I don't, I only have a handful of them. Personally, for me, with permanent color, because I just have a handful of clients, I just buy as I need. So that means if I have a client coming up that is, I know she's like a permanent level 5N with her grays and we just do her gray root touch up, maybe a few highlights and go, I'll just get just her gray formula when I need it and go on about my day. If you're having a new client and you're not sure what all they need, that's where having new client forms and um, having them send you photos of their current hair and what they want to get done, that's when that's really, really vital so that you don't have to buy a whole line of permanent color just to use one shade. High lift color, I don't use high lift color at all. I wasn't taught in beauty school really how to use it. You know it's a good tool for some blondes and just some colors, so if you're comfortable with using, kind of figure out how often are you gonna be using it and go from there. If you feel like you're gonna be using it on 30% of your clients, you may wanna have like maybe 15 to 20% of your whole color stock consisting of your high lift color so that you do have some stock of it you don't have to have it all the time um you know i that's how i would face it if you feel like you're going to use it 50 50 then yeah you may want to keep a good amount of the stock on it too all right now for your alkaline demis these are for a lot of your cream based demis that are just a little stronger in um longevity and are a little bit more opaque so for my alkaline demi that I'm using lately, I've been using L'Oreal Dia Regest, their demi line. You, you may find your stock of this variating based on the season. So right now, it's November 29th. Every, all of my clients have been going dark lately. So I have been having a lot more stock of my stronger demi lines than I do in the summer. In the summer, I'm normally keeping just my baseline of my base stock kind of. But now, again, since people are going darker or they're changing the tone of their hair or whatever, I'm definitely keeping a lot more of a stock of it. Personally, I think you can never go wrong with keeping a stronger demi or alkaline demi version of 3, 4, and 5 N. Especially if you have a good amount of clients that are naturally 3, 4, and 5 because you may either need that for root tapping, you may need that for low lighting, or if they decide to go all over dark and they spit that on you really quick, you'll always have that in your arsenal, kind of. I always, no matter what throughout the year, am always keeping 3, 4, and 5 N at least one to two tubes. Right now I have around three to four tubes of it lately because again, like I said, everybody's going dark. Like I said, I am keeping a good amount of stock in it no matter what. And now that I find myself grabbing it a little bit more, I am increasing that back stock. So don't hesitate to use your seasons to increase or decrease your back stock of stuff. Other things, other back stock shades I do like to always have are good fillers and low light shades. The fillers that I'm using a lot of the time in my alkaline demi range is 8G. Uh, L'Oreal also has like an 8GC. I like to keep that a lot too. Those are like my two main fillers. And then good low light shades as well. Right now, a lot of people are really wanting to see a lot of depth, a lot of dimension, a lot of darker tones. Um, so going for like your, like your low lights in, like based off of like whatever you typically low light the most in. For me personally, I find myself low lighting the most in seven and six N. So again, I'm keeping a lot of sevens and sixes on stock as well. Another thing that might be nice to keep a little bit of a back stock of are your coppers or your reds. Again, tis the season, especially right now for people going copper and people going red. So it won't hurt at all to keep just, I normally just do like a low stock of it. Just because coppers and reds are so different based on the person and what they want. No two formulas of reds are the same as you know. I normally just like to keep basic colors and I know that I might be intermixing them. So a 7C is your basic regular copper. Great to keep in stock. 
I've been using, I've had a lot of clients doing more of the auburn red this year, so I have been keeping 6RC in stock a lot because again, just for me and my clients personally, I've been, I feel like that's what, it's, I feel like a lot of people have been doing the more auburny red this year, so 6RC is another one that I keep in stock. I, I do think I've been keeping some copper golds in stock lately too, because also copper golds can be good for not just doing coppers, but also as fillers too for those going darker. So I'd say a good starting point is copper, copper gold. I don't think it would hurt to keep a tube or two of a copper red as well in case if they want something richer. One to two reds and one to two RVs as well. I feel like when I was first doing hair, more people were doing the more burgundies and the more purpley reds. That's not as much anymore. It's definitely shifted to the more auburny reds, but that doesn't mean that like no one's going to do it ever again. And if you're not sure, and if you feel like you don't have a lot of clients doing many reds at all, or just maybe a handful, then just do a base stock one to two tubes of all of those. Don't feel like you need to just because I use, I'm using more coppers and auburns doesn't mean that you necessarily will. I have like a hair that's like flying the side of all right, now onto your demi glosses. In my opinion, I definitely think if you have the means for it, investing in the entire demi line would be very helpful for you. If not the entire line, at least 90 to 95% of it. My go to demi gloss line is Oligo Colora Gloss. And I pretty much keep everything besides like their reds and their red violets, mainly because if I am doing a red, normally I need something a little bit more richer than a gloss. So that's where, again, I kind of go into like my alkaline dummies. But I'll even keep their coppers too because depending on what we're doing, sometimes it needs to be a little bit more sheer. Sometimes I want it more opaque. So that's why I like to keep coppers in both gloss and alkaline. Same thing with my low light shades is sometimes I need it to stick and be a little bit more opaque. And sometimes for clients that are super blonde that just want to try it for an appointment or two, that's where I might opt for more of a gloss demi. But yeah, you're going to find yourself using demis, the gloss demis all the time for root tapping, low lighting, color melting, toning. You go through it so quickly. Of all my demi stock, I'm normally keeping one to two tubes. And then again, seasonally, I will maybe keep a little bit more of the darker shades now for the winter or more of my low light shades and then in the summer I might have a little bit more blondes. Honestly again since I specialize in blondes I'm always running out of my nines and my tens and my sevens for my root tapping so it's not uncommon for me to keep around three tubes of my go-to blonde toners um, and my go-to root taps because a lot of my clients are like lived in blondes. Um, so normally year round I'm keeping a good stack of that and everything else I just kind of like base it off of seasonally. I keep a good, I would say to break it down to you, I keep a good general stock. So around two tubes of each shade in the gloss line. And then now in the, I always, and then in the summer I will double load up on my sevens, nines, and tens and then in my winter time, I will load a little bit more up on my darker colors and then keep my typical, like just regular load up of my level nines. So I'd say right now I'm normally keeping around two to three tubes of level nines and level sevens. And then I have around like two to three tubes of threes, fours, fives, and sixes as well. So right now is the time that I'm definitely getting a lot more color than lightener. For your tools for lightening and baby lighting and Balayaging. For foils, you need foils that are going to be good for both baby lighting and, ba and foils that are good for foilaging or balayaging or whatever. I love, for Mars, obviously I love their 5x11s, their traditional pop-up highlight foils, but also a hidden gem, something that's a little underrated, are their 8x11s. They, you've seen me use them and if you've watched any of my color tutorials, you've seen me use them. Those are like the bigger foils that I'm able to like close in like a book. Love those for long-haired foilaging for sure. Quality foiling combs too. Even if they're like, I am a sucker for like the regular degular crest ones that just have like the longer tip. I love me a good longer tip foiling comb because it just, I feel like then I have a little bit more room to do my weaving or my slicing or whatever. And two, keep in mind if you do teasy lighting, keep in mind the type of teeth in your comb that you have too. So if you have teeth that are a little bit finer, you're going to get a little bit more of a harsher tease. And if you have teeth that are a little bit whiter, you'll have a little bit of a softer tease. So I think it's really good to have a mix of both because sometimes I do need something either on stubborn hair 
or if I um, am doing a lot of teasing and I'm going down pretty low I do like to have a little bit more of a finer teeth comb but if I if, it, if either the hair is really tangle proof or if it teases really well or if I'm just pushing a little bit of the natural hair out of the way you definitely could just use a whiter tooth comb and then you're not detangling as much at the bowl ceramic bowls you guys biggest tip ever I love me a good ceramic bowl for a lot of reasons for the main reason they do not cause a chemical reaction like plastic can with the lightener so that means it doesn't swell when it's in the bowl or it won't swell nearly as fast if it's in the bowl the normally normally if it's swelling if it's in a ceramic bowl it's just because at that time it's been exposed to oxygen for too long and it's just time to remix i also like the ceramic bowls because they're weighted the bowl never is moving while you're like dipping your your bowl into the in the into the product i use ceramic bowls for everything now i use it for root tapping for coloring even if i'm doing like a gray touch up or whatever because i cannot stand when my bowl is moving around when i am um applying color i know you can get those suction bowls too so if you like those you could do those as well but i just like the ceramic bowls no matter what for lightning as well because again you don't get that chemical reaction um you can get those at any home decor store home goods is great because you normally get them for a discount then too or walmart target etc or amazon i've gotten some off amazon too I definitely recommend a color tray as well. Um, I was very fortunate. I was very fortunate my salon owner actually already gave us all color trays. They were already provided at the salon, so I didn't have to purchase one. And good color bottles as well. So um, I love the ones from Redken and Color Track. That's what pretty much all my coworkers use. We all just kind of like share them. But um, those are good for like anything for like a bottle application. So anything typically at the shampoo bowl for toning. If you are a bottle toner brushes brushes are extremely important i love from our brushes i definitely recommend getting like a couple kits of theirs they have multiple different like variety packs um just so that you can see which ones you like so for example i love their big daddy one for any root shade and i love their emperor brush for any like all over color because it's just easier to use that comb to like saturate as you go um and then for i like using their traditional like there's their traditional color brush for um any detail work any like money piece work or anything and then i will either use the power painter or the big daddy brush for like any larger foiling work so for like the interior of the head where i'm taking bigger sections and for tz lighting as well because i do feel like those both saturate cover a lot of surface area yet give a good blend at the same time too so that is it you guys i hope that this helps you guys out a lot if you like this type of video let me know i thought about doing like a business side of things um like a business side starter pack as well because again that was something that i definitely didn't know of what i needed things for like social media and that kind of stuff i thought about maybe sharing like some apps that i use on my phone for work and yeah so if you like this video let me know um, and yeah, other than that, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.